I recently sat down with famous Canadian jazz musician Ed Bickard to talk to him about his career. I'm Ed Bickard. I'm a retired guitar player and uh, I had always intended to be a musician as long as I can remember and uh, uh, there again, uh, well, I came to Toronto to get into the music scene and uh, that's, uh, I was pretty well focused in, in the idea of being a musician by that time, like in the early 50s and uh, uh, in spite of a few discouraging things that happened, I, uh, I still wanted to do it, so uh, I did it. While learning how to play, Ed basically taught himself. It's a matter of getting together with other guitar players and uh, just, you know, learning some things from them and a lot of things just learning by listening and, like I say, trial and error, so. Ed also had many memorable moments throughout his career. I had some know, very uh, wonderful experiences playing with some of the uh, American people who had come here just to play in a club or something, and, uh, and also uh, when Paul Desmond and I got to play together, uh, that was, that felt really good too, so those were certainly a couple of my favorite experiences musically. A few years ago, Ed had an accident which damaged his arms. Many people feared he would never play again. I just started towards the house and I just, my feet just went out from under me and I went crashing down and broke both my arms at the time and uh, that certainly slowed me down for, for quite a while. Middle of the night uh, operations that lasted for I don't know how many hours but it got all fixed and uh, after after like a year or so uh, I was back in business. I was also fortunate enough to sit down with one of Ed's old band members and old friends, Rick Wilkins. Okay, my name's uh, Rick Wilkins and I've been, oh, playing, I guess, uh, gosh, I started on piano when I was a kid, about five years old, but I've been playing the saxophone since uh, about age 15. Rick and Ed have known each other for decades, and they have worked on dozens of albums together. Yes, well, we, we both played on a lot of uh, albums with Rob's big band. Uh, I don't know how many albums we must have made, maybe 10 or 15, and uh, I played on one of Ed's uh, Concord albums called uh, uh, I Wished on the Moon. Uh, and there were countless others. We did a few for CTL that, uh, with Ed, where I was the arranger conductor and uh, he was the soloist. And uh, so we've, we've had a long association together. I, I call Ed the poet of the guitar. He just, uh, in any situation, he just kind of fits in and uh, uh, just makes the music better, whether it's in a big band or on a commercial gig. I think he really shines kind of when he's on small groups were like a trio or a duo or a quartet uh, where he has a little more space to stretch out and do what he does and he's just a, the perfect accompanist he, you know, he's all ears just listening all the time and uh, just provides the greatest background to anybody who wants to sing with him or, or play with him so uh, I don't know he's just one of those masterful musicians that uh, you know that we're fortunate to have here Many people were shocked and disappointed when Ed announced his retirement. There were quite a few people who said, uh, we'd like you to try and make a comeback or something. But I, I don't know, there again, if I'm, am I just too lazy or what? But it uh, hasn't happened. Ed speaks honestly when he talks about life as a jazz musician. It's not a good choice for uh, making a living. Uh, some people can can manage it if they uh, have some kind of business sense along with the desire to make music. It works for some people, but for a lot of them it's just uh, very frustrating and disappointing. But if, um, if somebody really wants badly enough to be a, a musician, then uh, they, will, uh, they will do it, even if it's not going to be a practical thing to do. It's just something they have to have to uh, do. 
it's uh, it's in their blood. They can't uh, can't deny it.